Inspection crews respond to a 15-acre fire in Rossi as another blaze in Governor injures one firefighter. Plus, a second Watertown City Council candidate is dropping out as another one speaks out about the objections filed against him. And fighting world hunger one can at a time. Volunteers work to prepare 16,000 pounds of chicken to be shipped across the globe. Good evening, Garrett Dombluski is off. I'm Zach Grady. Thank you for joining us. First tonight, the Massachusetts Air National Guardsman accused of leaking classified documents online made his first court appearance today. He remains in jail tonight. CBS News correspondent Willie James Inman has more on the case from the White House. 21-year-old Jack Texera has been behind bars since federal agents descended on his mother's home south of Boston Thursday. He did not enter a plea in a federal courtroom where he was officially charged with violating the Espionage Act for removing and transmitting classified materials. People who sign agreements uh, to be able to receive classified documents acknowledge the importance to the national security of not uh, disclosing those documents. Texera is accused of bringing home the top secret documents, photographing them, and then posting them online in a private gaming chat room as early as December. This is about the transmission, uh, both the unlawful retention and the transmission of the documents. There are very serious penalties associated with that. Texera was assigned to cyber defense operations. Now there are questions about why he was allowed to access the classified documents. I cannot think of a compelling reason, and I assume uh, Secretary Austin and, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs Milley are, are probably asking those same questions. Court documents allege that Texera used his security clearance to search for classified information about the investigation into the leaker. His family did not comment outside the courthouse. You said I love you to your son at court. Would you like to say now? Texera is scheduled to be back in court on Wednesday. Willie James Inman, CBS News, The White House. In local news, new developments in the race for Watertown City Council candidate Jason Trainer announces he will stay on the ballot for the June primary. A specific objection was raised against Trainer's petitions by city resident Jean Barker. She's alleging some of the signatures on Trainer's petitions are not from registered voters, incomplete, or appear to be written in the same handwriting. The Board of Elections said on Friday, while some signatures were not allowed, the preliminary findings show Trainer has enough signatures to move forward onto the June 27th ballot. Barker also has challenged the petitions of Brian Watson, who has already withdrawn from the race. Barker's ob specific objections allege Watson petitions, Watson's petition included false signatures. Watson has since apologized, but does look to continue as a write-in candidate. Meanwhile, the deadline for the general objection filed against candidate Leonard Spaziani's petitions to become a specific objection is now expired. The timeline is three days for a general objection to become a specific objection. That did not happen. The objection is now closed, and Spaziani is told his petitions have no red flags. Board of, Board of Elections says I'm good to go. There's nothing wrong. I mean, every, everything is there. I got 384. Someone wants to challenge? That's their legal right, but, you know, I, I'm good. The fourth candidate whose petitions were objected to is Matthew Melvin. Melvin announced he is also pulling out of the race. The Jefferson County Board of Elections will hold a public hearing Tuesday morning at 1030, addressing the objections filed against both Trainer and Watson. Let's head over to the Weather Center now. John Kubis is in. John, the windows were down, my sunglasses were on. It was beautiful out. Is, is it a tease, or is that going to be sticking around for a little while? Oh, it looks like the next couple of days, Zach, looking very nice, warm, a little taste of summer heading our way. Soak it all in, too, because it's going to come to an abrupt end next week. All right, let's check those maps. First weather brought to you by Doors Plus at Adams Center. A couple of clouds, mainly down to our south, and that'll be the theme over the next couple of days. Some clouds passing by and very warm conditions. 50 at 6 by noon, mid-70s, warmer in some spots. I think we top out near 80 on our Saturday. A little bit cooler by the water, so we'll talk temps. We'll also talk about rain as well here in a few. Zach, back to you. Thanks, John. According to the State Department of Environmental Conservation, the fire danger risk in, is high for some areas across the North Country and moderate in others. 7 News reporter Sean Brenda tells us tonight how St. Lawrence County firefighters are battling the blazes. 
The North Country has had numerous calls for outdoor fires where firefighters show up with tankers, four-wheelers, and water packs. This Thursday afternoon fire reignited Friday. Firefighters from Governor, Hammond, Briar Hill, and Oxbow called to the town of Rossi. 15 to 20 acres of land reportedly on fire. Sunny, 70-degree days in April are nice, but firefighters know it can create problems this time of year. I love this type of weather. I'm really looking forward to the weekend. But at the same time, the, the firefighter side of me almost doesn't look forward to it because I know that there's going to be grass fires, there's going to be, there's going to be issues. For Governor, it had another call earlier this week, posting on its Facebook page that volunteers responded to a hay fire that spread to farm equipment and a vehicle. Chief Engineer Thomas Conklin saying one firefighter had to be taken to the hospital, adding, as a result of disregarding the New York State burn ban, a firefighter was injured during firefighting operations at this out-of-control set fire. The state's burn ban of tree limbs and leaves goes through May 14th. Former Hammond Fire Chief and current town supervisor Ron Bertram says people don't realize with these conditions how quickly a fire can spread. It, it is a very serious problem. These things, um, people think they can burn a little, um, a little pile of debris or something, or burn off some flowers. It, it gets out of hand, and they can't stop it. According to National Weather Service meteorologist Marvin Boyd, the weather the North Country experienced this week was very unusual for the spring season, and St. Lawrence County has had a moderate fire warning this week. If the plants are not, or the vegetation is not receptive, it doesn't matter that we necessarily meet the weather conditions. So one thing this year is we're meeting the fuel conditions as well. Um, I know the fire risk community has had several days of moderate in the St. Lawrence Valley. Violators of the state's open burning regulation could be fined $500 for a first offense. Sean Brenda, 7 News. Several Jefferson County fire departments fought a blaze back this afternoon in a field in the town of Philadelphia. The blaze was reported as a vehicle fire. Some firefighters were forced to use ATVs to reach it. We were told the fire was under control. A mother and son from the town of Watertown are facing burglary charges for a break-in of a secured storage unit. State police say 64-year-old Dale Damon and 24-year-old Austin Keenan broke into the A-Bay storage facility on State Route 12 in the town of Alexandria early Wednesday. They were interrupted by the property owner when they fled on foot but were later found and charged. They both were arraigned and released. A traffic stop in Ogdensburg leads to police finding cocaine and the arrest of three people. City police say it happened last Friday around midnight on Ogden Street. A canine alerted officers to drugs being in the car. Police say they found two ounces of cocaine. 35-year-old Ashley Fuller of Lisbon, 43-year-old Patrick Martino of Lisbon, and 34-year-old Curtis Redman of Florida all are facing drug charges. All three were arraigned and released. In Lewis County, the challenger in the sheriff's race is picking up the conservative party line. Retired state trooper Nicole Turek has been endorsed by the state conservative party. The party chairman says the party was impressed with her grasp, grasp of the issues. A party spokesman says Turek's opponent, current sheriff Mike Carpinelli, did not ask for the party's endorsement until after learning it had been given to Turek. Turek's name will now appear on the conservative line. Carpinelli had the conservative line in 2011 and 2015. He could not be reached for comment. And finally tonight, we here at Channel 7 upgraded things overnight Thursday. It has not been 100% smooth sailing. If your cable provider is airing our Fox programming on the channel where you usually see Channel 7, you need to call them and tell them. One viewer has suggested for Spectrum customers they need to call and have the automated voice send a reboot to their cable box and it should fix the issues. We are aware of the issue, it, however, is not our issue to be able to fix. We have done what we can on our end. Again, if you are seeing Fox programming on your CBS WWNY station, call your cable company. Additionally, in order to get this message to those who are currently only getting Fox on CBS, we are running this broadcast on both stations in hopes you receive our message. Still to come, Mel's in tonight with your North Country Sports Report. We meet Hammond's Ava Howley, a state champion and this week's 7 News Athlete of the Week. 
Plus, we meet a man from right here in the North Country who's responsible for the touchscreen technology used in almost every restaurant you walk into when 7 News continues. From the North Country's news station, you're watching 7 News Tonight with Garrett Dombluski. Tonight's weather with John Kubis. And your North Country sports with Mel Bussler. The winning late night lotto numbers for Friday the daily, 6, 3, 4, and your win for 3, 8, 3, 8. Together we can, the motto of a group in Lauville Friday as they can thousands of pounds of chicken to help fight hunger. 7 News reporter Chad Charette has the story. It may screech, shoot water, and billow steam, but inside is helping folks make a difference in the fight against hunger. We are canning 16,000 pounds of chicken, um, and it's for um, humanitarian relief around the world. After mounds of meat were ground and loaded onto trays, they were taken here aboard the Mennonite Central Committee's mobile canning station. Lauville is the last leg of its cross-country journey, and we're told there's nothing else quite like it. It is the only, only mobile canner that's in operation. It's USDA uh, inspected, so we're able to do uh, canned meat uh, according to that. How does one acquire such a massive amount of meat to can? Donations, a notable one coming from the Northern New York Community Foundation. And the rest? For the most part, um, just people. So the local community just donates, and we raised $60,000. 16,000 pounds of chicken translates to roughly 10,000 cans. After being put in a pressure cooker, cleaned and labeled, many will be shipped to areas in the middle of humanitarian crises, like Ukraine, Ethiopia, and parts of the Middle East. I guess I thought a lot about every child that may have a good meal. Although most of these cans are being sent overseas, about 10% remain local. That adds up to about 42 of these cases behind me being sent to pantries across the North Country. We can increase the amount of meat that we do. Um, we're hoping to do that um, in the future. This was the fourth year the canners made its way to Lowville, and organizers tell us nothing can stop them from bringing it back for a fifth. Chad Charette, 7 News. When you go to a restaurant or cafe, you typically see your server using a touchpad to take your order. The man who invented it has roots right here in the North Country, but he never got a patent for it. 7 News reporter Lexi Bruning spoke today with the point-of-sale pioneer. Finishing touches are being made ahead of the grand opening of Sweet Jenny's in Cape Vincent. That includes upgrading its point-of-sale system. We go to complete the order. There's a receipt right there. The owners called the man who knows it best. After all, his name is on the system. 1980, I guess, I created the term point of sale. Inventor and former restaurateur Eugene Jean Mosier founded the free software point of sale solution ViewTouch in 1986, which he says is the first touchscreen point of sale system. And just a few days ago, he flew from Eugene, Oregon to help the Cape Vincent business, steering away from Telly's Fine Dining to the village's new spot for breakfast, lunch, and sweets. Back on the page where we can order more coffee. Completely blows my mind. I mean, who does that? The most humble person I have met, and I'm just, I'm, I'm still floored, honestly. Genevieve Letizia noticed the inventor was from Philadelphia. She assumed Pennsylvania, but he actually grew up just miles away. And being from here, uh, it seemed pretty natural to just get on the plank of back here and see what's changed. His point of sale system was the first time anyone actually recorded and communicated sales information in real time to a restaurant kitchen using a home computer. Now restaurants hardly operate without them. You want that efficiency and you want it to be quick too because the customer doesn't want to stand around and wait um, while you're trying to find you know whatever you need to punch into the system. You want to make sure it's accurate as well. So next time you put in an order at your local cafe or restaurant think about the point of sale pioneer. Lexi Bruning, 7 News. Now, tonight's weather. Kind of mild outside, considering the time of night and the time of year. Sitting at 54 degrees with the clear skies. Winds from the northeast at about 7. And uh, I think tomorrow the winds will be rather light. And it's going to be another warm day. All right, pressure 2984 has been holding steady. That'll be the ongoing trend over the next couple of days until that pressure will be falling. 
come Sunday night. 79 the high was at a record, nope, not even close. An all time record 87, set back in 68. The low 47, and there you see the averages. We are well above on both ends. Upper 50s for you, Messina. 56 at Old Forge, 54 out Wanakee in a way. 57 in Lyleville, 62 at Fort Drum, no report for you out of Barnes Corners. In Kingston currently at 61. All right, notice not too much happening, mainly clear conditions, however, as we widen the view. A couple of clouds moving in from the southern tier, now towards the Catskills and Finger Lakes as well. I don't think we'll be cloudy over the next couple of days, but we will have full sunshine like we had today or yesterday. As we widen the view a bit more, a whole bunch of disturbed weather off to the west. Low pressure located in northern Minnesota and attached to that, a cold front, as the name implies, it is cold behind this feature, and yes, indeed, we will be dealing with some of that chillier air, it looks like, next week. So enjoy the warmth for the next couple of days, and it's that time of year, some of the larger showers and thunderstorms in the plains. All right, let's go ahead and check out the future cast and notice overnight tonight, not too much going on, keeping it dry with some clouds, lows in the 40s to 50s. That might be a bit of an outlier in Barnes Corners of 63. Uh, notice during the day tomorrow, highs easily in the 70s, a little bit cooler by the lake shore, and also out towards Old Forge and Tupper Lake. I think we top out around 80 degrees tomorrow with partly sunny skies. Your lows tonight pretty much in the 40s to middle 50s under mainly clear conditions tomorrow. Looking partly sunny, highs in the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s. In Lewis County overnight, quiet for you. Some passing clouds, lows, 53 in Harrisville, 54 in Lyleville and Barnes Corners. Uh, tomorrow looking mainly sunny or partly sunny, I should say. Rather warm, highs around 80. St. Lawrence County overnight, mainly clear, lows in the mid to upper 40s to lower 50s. Tomorrow looking partly sunny, highs in the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s. Looks like Sunday looking warm. And partly sunny, highs around 75. Rain moves in Sunday night. Monday, rain all day and highs around 59. A bit chillier on Tuesday, highs in the mid 40s with some showers. Tuesday nights, maybe some snow mixing in. Adirondacks and Tokyo Plateau, leftover shower on Wednesday and warming up on Thursday and also on Friday as well. Coming up next, Mel has sports. Stay tuned. Now your North Country sports. Time for your Toyota Sports Report. College softball, men's college lacrosse on the docket for this Friday night. The lovely and talented Rob Crone is in with the highlights. Men's college lacrosse, SUNY Potsdam entertaining SUNY Geneseo. Jack Hellriggle finds a crack inside the left goalpost. 8 nothing Geneseo. Liam Castle to Reese Gerlock, who flicks a low behind the back shot to score. Gerlock again sprawling to the ground on an overhand shot tickles Twine. The Bears' Owen Walsh fires a shot into the net, but a half second after the buzzer, down 11 0 at the half. William McKaminsky rips a shot through the five hole. Max Esposito gets his own rebound and drills home a goal number 14. Drew Rose on the run goes top shelf for the Bears' first goal. Rose again wrestles through two defenders and scores. Ryan Tribbing with a pick inside the opposite post. SUNY Geneseo beats SUNY Potsdam 15-2. College softball, SUNY Canton hosting SUNY Poly. Madeline Hone doubles to the gap, scoring pitcher Trinity Critelli 11-0 Poly. Amy Decina singles over the shortstop, driving in Hone. Kimberly Birmingham goes deep to center field for a two-run homer. Critelli twirls a no-hit shutout guiding SUNY Poly to a 14-0 win over the Ruse. Rob Crone, 7 News Sports. Tonight's local scoreboards brought to you by Kraft 836 Canteen on Coffeen Street in Watertown. Featuring crafted specialty pizzas, shareable appetizers, desserts, and sandwiches. For great food to go or eat in, it's Kraft 836 Canteen. Men's College Lacrosse, SUNY Geneseo defeats SUNY Potsdam. College baseball, SUNY Canton, a winner over SUNY Poly. College softball, SUNY Poly shuts out SUNY Canton. Well, this week we honor a basketball player from Hammond who's playing beyond her years. Her round ball talents earning her the Watertown Savings Bank 7 News North Country Athlete of the Week Award. 
Ava Howie of Hammond receives this week's honor. The super sophomore had an outstanding season in helping to lead her team to the state championship. She averaged 18 points, six assists, and four steals during the regular season. She put up 28 points in the state semifinal win over Panama. She was voted a first team league performer in the Northern Athletic Conference. The best news of all for Red Devil fans, she has two more years of high school ball ahead. Um, yeah, I got some things I want to work on, travel ball, to prepare for next season. I think my strength is like getting our team going in the locker room, on the court, just if you make a mistake, how to recover from it and keep going. Yeah, I am. Um, I thought it would be a little later, but getting a chip, but I want another one now. I think um, all the role models from older years kind of help with that. We, I used to be a manager, all of us really did. We used to be on the bench going to the older girls' practices, and it helped show what we needed to do to win one. Sometimes I forget that Ava's only in 10th grade because she plays like she's a senior out there. She's played like she's been on the floor for years, um, and that just makes her you know, one special player, and to be able to step up and play the way she did in the state final four is what every coach dreams of. Ava can, she's fast, she gets gets out in transition, she gets her points from there, and that's what teams see. But then they also don't see, she can work inside the paint, she can shoot the three, and she's really an all-around player. Oh, absolutely, and it's great that Ava and Landry have such a great relationship. You know, they still got a couple years left together, and they're gonna really have to lead their team for this, or next year. Congratulations to Ava Howie of Hammond. The Watertown Savings Bank 7 News, North Country Athlete of the Week. Well, the first night was a great one on area ranges of the Northern Tier Trap League. Here's Trap Score's individual results compiled by the temptress of Trap, the lovely Gina Worth. Checking team results from last night, Harrisville over Adams Center, Brownville defeated Governor, Carthage and Sackets Harbor ended in a tie. Beaver River nipped snow fun of Evans Mills, Lime over Lowellville, Henderson shaded Glenn Gregg. 27 shooters were perfect last night. Nick Berenger, Randy Butler, also Rob Fredericks, Clancy O'Donnell, and Noah Simser. Also Scott Glenn, Kale Fischette, Kyle Busby, Mike Vady II, and Ryan Reed. They're followed by Skylar Reb, Merle Arndt, Patrick Flynn, Larry Phillips, and John Farney. Also Kurt Garo, Mike Murphy, Len Kelfels, Josh Grimshaw, and George Hart. Add to the list, Bill Kent, Todd Edick, Steve Schweitzer, Don Church, and Ed Powell. Rounding out the list, John Fish and Jake Davies. Tampa Bay Rays lost their first game following a record-tying 13-0 start as Colin Posh forced in two runs with bases loaded walks. Second baseman Brandon Lowe made a key error on a four-run fifth inning that lifted the Toronto Blue Jays to a 6-3 win. George Springer hit a leadoff home run. Bo Bichette had five hits in an RBI. Tampa Bay's 13-0 record matched the 1982 Atlanta Braves. 1987 Milwaukee Brewers trailing only the 20-0 start by the 1884 St. Louis Maroons of the Union Association. Carlos Correa homered for the second straight game, hit a go-ahead two-run double in the eighth inning off Clay Holmes as the Minnesota Twins rallied to beat the Yankees 4-3. Correa homered in the six off Nestor Cortez and helped the Twins overcome a 3-2 deficit in the eighth, dealing the Yankees their first consecutive losses this season. After winning its first four series, New York can at best get a four-game split. Anthony Volpe led off his big league homer here, and Aaron Judge hit his fifth of the season on the next pitch. Well, that's it for now. We're going to stop pay some bills. Zach Grady is going to wrap things up. The warmth continues this upcoming weekend. We'll have a little bit of sunshine as well. Mid-70s around noon, near 80 by 5. For John and Mel, this has been 7 News Tonight. Brendan Straub is back tomorrow for your weekend report. Thank you for joining us.